I think it's time to spend a couple quarters. That's right. Ever since 40 minutes ago, I've completely altered my lifestyle to focus on only the classics. And I mean the real classics. Ugh. That was the shittiest spin of all time. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Centipede, Space Invaders, Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe. I'm a changed man. Truly. Just ask me. And my life is only better because of it. Do you understand? But putting all the high scores aside, the arcade is also a place to socialize. Do kids these days even know what that word means? This is how I drive in real life. Might break a couple windows, pick up a couple girls. You know, that's just how it is when you're a true arcader like me. What? Gen Z's trying to what? Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Hey baby, look poppy, why don't you come back to my place? My mom can make Nope, 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 nope. nope. Huh, man. What did I do wrong? I thought this is how you were supposed to be cool. Thanks a lot, Adam Sandler. Uh, what the fuck? Man. Now that's convenient. How the hell is there a perfect replica of my room here? Did Adam do this? Hey, guys. <laughs> Have any of you ever wanted to hear about the best movie of 2015 and also ever? Well, too bad! I've had enough of that in these past few hours. A picture element, commonly abbreviated as a pixel, is known as the smallest addressable element in most digital display devices. A TV, monitor, your Nintendo Switch, they're all made up of a bunch of them. But that's just it. Just one pixel isn't gonna do anything. You need multiple to make anything of substance. What if there were, like, two pix- Holy shit. Pixels is a cross between comedy and science fiction in the film world, directed by Chris Columbus and produced by the one and only Adam Sandler. A lot of different production companies worked their asses off for this piece of work. You got Columbia Pictures, 1492 Pictures, and wait. The guy who directed this movie is named Chris Columbus. Is he the leader of Columbia Pictures? Or 1492 Pictures? You know, because that was... <sighs> I'm getting off topic. And also, Sandler's very own Happy Madison Productions, a name taken from two of his other movies, Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. Wow! I care! The film is loosely based on the Patrick Jean short film of the same name, which had classic arcade game characters terrorizing the streets of New York City for two minutes. I can just imagine Adam Sandler sitting on his couch absolutely shit-faced watching it and just going, I have a vision. Production began in 2010, the same year that Pixels the short film came out, Chris Columbus signed on after Sandler begged everyone else and failed in 2013, and filming began in Toronto on May 28th, 2014. After three months of what I can only imagine to be pure bliss, and another year of production, the film released in theaters across America on July 24th, 2015, to critical acclaim. Yeah, no. <laughs> this movie... didn't exactly do good both critic-wise and earning-wise, but, uh, there's a piss joke in there. Razzies? The fuck are the ra- Bro. But as a little fifth grader who loved everything video games, I was bound to find out about this movie. It was late in the school year. I was out at recess talking random shit with my best friend at the time, Rupin, and he told me all about it. I was absolutely psyched. Hey, so there's this, like, one movie about video games coming out this summer. It's called, like, Pixels or something like that. I don't know. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Even though it was rated PG-13 and I was only 10, my dad let me go out with him to the movies to see it shortly after release. And I fucking loved that shit unironically. And ever since, as weird as it is to say, it's had a soft spot in my heart, despite how dumb the whole thing is. Honestly, I think my dad only let me see it because he liked Adam Sandler. But here's the real question. Does Pixels, starring Adam Sandler, still hold up in my heart today? What? Did you expect me to say, let's find out? No, I don't need to say that, because it all happened already, as you can obviously see. You missed it. Sorry. Right? Hey, guys! Are you ready for the best movie night ever? Yeah! Wait, I thought we were ascending into heaven. Oh, don't worry. This is just about as close as you can get. Adam Sandler might as well be a full-fledged angel for cooking this one up. <laughs> 
Shit, I forgot to turn it off. Just like any masterpiece would, Pixels begins with a flashback to the year 1982, where we meet our first two main characters, Sam Brenner and Will Cooper. Just your average super cool teenagers in the 80s. They ride bikes, drink out of the hose, and steal enough money to buy real estate back then from little girls. One of those was a lie. Okay, maybe these two aren't the coolest, because all they're both riled up for today is this new place in town that just opened up. The Arcade. Wow, what a concept. I'm sure in the next few decades, this won't lead to- <laughs> So these two gooners use all the quarters they stole to play the latest and greatest. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Santa Pete, you get it. And Brenner is just a fucking natural at it, to be honest. In this day and age, we call this autism. Cooper sucks ass, apart from the crane game, which will be important later, take notes, and invites Brenner to a tournament where only the sweatiest people lie. Here, we meet two more important characters, Ludlow Lamonsoff, an extremely geeky conspiracy theorist who needs to be locked up immediately, and Eddie Plant, aka the Fire Blaster, who actually does get locked up later, spoilers. And don't worry about the name, because it's totally too beautiful. Oh my god. They play all their games, set some records, and it all comes down to Brenner and Eddie against each other and the one, the only, Donkey Kong. Eddie fucking cheats and wins. But wait, why is the movie showing us all this shit? Who cares? Well, I mean, besides the fact that the movie is about old video games, so showing the master at the beginning of a story is always important, but even more importantly, the extremely unsubtle plot foreshadowing given by fucking Dan Aykroyd of all people. NASA, who will be videotaping tonight's competition, that videotape will be placed in a space probe which will be launched with the hope of connecting to extraterrestrial life. I'm sure nothing will come out of that, and will you shut the hell up, Ludlow? Someone drop kick that kid. We're in the present now! Brenner and Cooper, over 30 years later, still Aww. friends and talking about which 80s celebrity woman they want to fuck the most, just like old times. Also, Cooper is the fucking president of the United States of America now? Wow, okay, even I will admit that's a lazy ass way to make government involvement fit in here. Like, yeah, you see that movie poster? Adam Sandler ain't gonna be dealing with that shit all by himself with a couple of his cronies, if even. A giant Pac-Man eating New York City? The military's going DEFCON 3 on that shit. Just like the last time something happened there. But nah, just make Sandler's best friend in the film the damn president and boom! Easy! Anyways, Cooper can't read for shit, Brenner roasts the hell out of him for pretty much no reason, something that will happen many more times, and the two go their separate ways, Brenner in specific heading to his job. Wow, what an upstanding job! Installing electronics! And I almost wouldn't be complete shit if he didn't have to talk to this fucking kid. Oh, this fucking kid, bro. Uh, Brenner, video games are a useless skill now. Go live on Twitch. Start a speedrunning career, bro. At this kid's house, whose name is Maddie, we meet his mom, Violet Van Patten. And all right, Brenner's already making moves on her. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, he's already in cuffs at this point. So basically, Maddie got a shit ton of stuff to install because his parents are getting a divorce. Van Patten is sad about it and copes by doing some sweet day drinking. And the literal second she refuses a kiss on the lips from Brenner five minutes after meeting him, Brenner treats her like shit for the next hour of the movie. Brother. Intertwined with this scene for some reason is the United States military base in Guam being attacked by... No. It can't be. Pixels! No! Not Tyler the Creator! Bro, the bitrate is dying. <laughs> <laughs> they took him. <laughs> now imagine just getting finished with your shitty dead-end job of installing a PS4 or some shit, and then all of a sudden getting a call from Joe <laughs> Biden to meet him in the Oval Office. Yeah, I know, it's only something Adam and I get. Oh, and of course Van Patten is also heavily affiliated with the government, as if Cooper wasn't enough. We got a lot of crazy coincidences going on here, something I'm sure won't continue the deeper into this mess we go. One unwarranted 80s reference later, and Cooper is telling Brenner that the old arcade game, Galaga, is what stole Tyler. Brenner somehow then proceeds to break into the president's super important meeting without a hint of security stopping him, blabs on and on about how the Galaga that attacked them is specifically the Galaga from 1982, <laughs> gets shut down after this old ass geezer who I fucking hate decides, oh no, the Wash Tech installer can't make presidential decisions, eh, and leaves. But not without one completely unjustified roast of everyone in the room individually. Gandalf and Harry Potter in the same room, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Ludlow somehow after all this time finds his way into Brenner's van, they scuffle, kiss a little, and then Ludlow brings him to his secret lair. His Lady Lisa fleshlight filled basement in his grandma's house to be exact. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And if you're wondering what obscure ass 80s piece of media she's from, well, Pixels of course, they made her up. <laughs> 
And this is where the bombshell is dropped. By yet again another completely crazy coincidence, one of Ludlow's old VHS tapes got interfered by a race of aliens who saw the tape of them playing video games in 1982 and are now taking it as a declaration of war. Did the aliens pick specifically this tape because they somehow knew Ludlow's greasy ass doesn't have cable? Who knows? But what's really important is that the aliens also disclosed that they lost their first life of three with Galaga. By they, I mean they as in the humans. I I'm fucking stupid, my bad. And the next showdown will be tomorrow night in India. My life, my well, that's great. I'm glad we actually know what's going on now. The world is saved. Someone get the president on this. The Taj Mahal has fallen. Cooper just straight up took absolutely zero of their advice. I mean, I get not listening to Ludlow, but Brenner, that's your guy. You would never betray Adam Sandler. They need to step up their game, for real. Whoa there, why are we letting them inside this super top secret military base where all the walls are plain white? Tell me you at least checked them for explosives. Turns out Van Patten is in charge of making fucking history with these souped up light cannons made from the leftovers of the Guam attack. I mean, that's a good way to move the plot forward and all, but I just don't care. This is Oppenheimer levels of talking right now. I'm too attention deficit for this. Now that's more like it. After whatever the hell that was, a freaky ass training montage, no thanks to Ludlow, and another message from the aliens, it's time for the first actual battle of the film. It London edition, oh I crikey ma- That's Australia. I swear there were like three back to back British people sound funny jokes in this segment, bro. Anyways, this time around, Centipede comes to attack them. And even though the two literal most qualified people to help out are standing right there, the stupid ass old guy and his British twin don't let them participate. And guess what happens as a result? Oh. Did these army men not learn a single thing from their Adam Sandler sponsored training? Okay, don't make fun of me, but I cried in the theater here. The literal only on screen death in the movie right there. Rest in peace. My heart goes out to the family. What do you mean this is CGI? After that, Adam Sandler being his absolutely flawless self decides to step in and defeats the centipede single-handedly. Turns out though, for whatever reason, it's time for level two. All the loser 80s kids watching this at home definitely shouted that out the second they saw the palette change. Oh, 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 oh childhood memories. That's the level two color palette. Holy shit! Let the nerds take over! Speaking of loser 80s kids watching this at home, I think I found them a new catchphrase to say at any possible opportunity ever. Now going from a team of hundreds to just two, things seem to be going a lot better now. I wonder why. Hey, wait. I don't remember the part of level two of Centipede where the centipede just straight up leaves the screen, invades an apartment complex, and nearly eats a little British boy. Well, I've never played Centipede before, so it probably checks out. So now, with one victory in hand, they only have two more to go before the Earth is saved. How much longer is this movie? In the middle of their well-deserved celebration, whilst drinking the token Dan Aykroyd Crystal Head vodka, of course, the gang is once again intercepted by the aliens, giving them the bad but true news that the aliens are still leading two to one. This is like a regular thing now? Bro, did you not Bro. hear them? <laughs> and they need backup. Told you. After a series of incredibly stupid requests from the Fire Blaster in exchange for joining the gang, it seems like there's nowhere for them to go but up. They have the confirmation that the next battle's gonna be in New York, they look at the poster for the movie they're in, see Pac-Man eating New York, put two and two together, and BOOM! Now they have full-on suits, an actual team name, four Mini Coopers meant to resemble the four ghosts in Pac-Man, and the totally real creator of Pac-Man on their side as a fourth member? I changed my mind! I hope this movie never ends! A group of strong as the arcaders will never fail. Hmm, maybe I can get behind this movie's CGI. It honestly looks pretty good to me. Oh, you think they would've like easy. evacuated the city by now if they That's knew it was in New York? Pac-Man has one life left, so do the humans, and it's just down to Brenner after, you know, Eddie fucking killed himself back there. So, he comes up with a genius plan. He purposefully lets Pac-Man eat a power pellet, counts the slowest 10 seconds of all time while driving backwards through a parking garage just to make it more intense, and times it so Pac-Man eats him just as the power pellet wears off, killing him instantly for touching a ghost. I'm a true arcader now. You know what two consecutive victories calls for? A... <coughs> A BALL! <laughs> oh yeah, for winning, they got a trophy, similar to how Tyler got taken as a trophy after the Guam attack. Welcome to the movie, the best character, Cubert! If you have seen the ending to this movie, I highly advise you to be quiet. It will come. Okay, Wood. hear me out, guys. Hear me out. <laughs> With nobody to look after him, fuck-ass Maddie tags along to the ball as well, convincing Brenner to ask his mom out. But, but they despise each other. Okay, I guess they like each other again now. 
Talk about character development. Man, Adam Sandler never fails to make himself a woman magnet in all his movies. Man, Adam Sandler never fails to make all the other characters woman repellent in all his movies. They really got Serena Williams to be in this movie just to be a dick to Eddie. Also, what? How are you alive? Man, things have been calm for too long. I've mastered this movie cycle by now. Where's the terrorism? And right on cue. So apparently, according to the aliens, the humans committed the class one felony of cheating in a video game. Basically meaning the Earth is toast now. Oh, <laughs> okay, makes sense to me. What am I saying? No, it doesn't. How the hell did they cheat? What, attacking the humans with absolutely no warning in the beginning doesn't count? What about the time when you just pulled a level 2 for no reason whatsoever? Man, who could have done this? It was fucking Eddie. Turns out, the glasses Eddie's been wearing for his entire life, including the tournament back in 1982, have cheat codes written inside the lenses, meaning he, by some completely unnatural physics-defying turn of events, literally cheated in real life. Alright, so if I've studied the totally not fake cheat codes from a movie that totally exists in real life Pac-Man available in arcade cabinets across the globe correctly, and translated them into real life, well, uh, then it should be. Neutral, low, park, drive, reverse, drive. Okay, that's the lake of fire. And Maddie of all people caught him? Okay, that's just rich. This is how they get you. Guys, guys, why are we freaking out so much? It's only the end of the world. Besides, y'all are about to miss the funniest scene in all of cinema history. <laughs> I am genuinely so sorry. There were better takes of that scene that just didn't make the final cut, right? Right? The funniest part to me is that they just took him for literally no reason at all. Like, I guess cheating counts as a loss and all, but then why didn't they take back Qbert? Whatever. At this point, everything is basically falling apart. Everyone's in total panic mode, and the arcaders have been practically reduced to just Brenner, Ludlow, Van Patten, and Qbert, I guess. No, not my arcaders. They can't give up. What they need is a positive can-do attitude. Yeah! I'm kidding. We are all gonna die. Oh, okay. Never mind. Why even try? I'm putting your name at the top of my suicide note, Adam Sandler. With as little hope as the team has, their only option at this point is to just head out into the chaos-filled streets of DC and try their best to confront the aliens firsthand inside their mothership, whilst managing the millions of video game warriors, as the aliens put it. Bro, I don't even think there were a thousand video games back in 1982. Wow, this is pretty shit. Oh fuck, Crossy Road ripoff! Wait, it's the crane! This is what I was talking about! Okay, we can just skip the rest of the movie now. This is all I ever cared about. Cooper's back. They decide to split up, leaving Ludlow suspiciously alone. Get away from those kids now! Yeah, so I yeah, can have them. Yeah. And ascend for their final battle. You're all on the edge of your seat, right? Oh yeah, but not before fucking Eminem from the Rap God music video lets them in. Duh. Rather than talking it out with the aliens in an actual civilized manner, Big Ape. Wow, Pixels. Okay, I'll admit, while a final showdown like that would be super lame, in this movie's context, honestly, it'd be fucking hilarious. The one game you suck at. The one game you suck at my ass, Cooper. Now is not the fucking time. Eddie literally cheated, and while Brenner is unaware, from his perspective, he's still good enough at each game to not only come in second against Eddie in the tournament from when they were teenagers, but also make it this far during the alien attacks. I keep being let down so much to the point of irrationality just from one tiny mistake, which in Brenner's case wasn't even a mistake, but don't let that cause you to fucking fold saving the whole damn planet. Did I just take this movie of all things seriously? Uh, there's that piss joke I mentioned. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Brenner proceeds to fold saving the whole damn planet. That is, until Maddie spills the truth to him. The full truth. While Eddie did use his glasses to cheat, that's the whole reason for all this, him using them back in the day against Brenner to win the tournament, effectively makes Brenner the number one Donkey Kong player in the entire world. In 1982. So, it looks like the predicament I just ranted about for way too long doesn't even matter anymore. Wow, thanks Maddie. I should just shut the fuck up, shouldn't I? Now with this absolute bombshell laying upon Brenner's mind, he goes full throttle, with more motivation than ever. Many intense moments, and a bunch of extremely unrealistic acrobatics later, Brenner finally saves the planet with one finishing blow to Donkey Kong with a hammer. Erm, um, that's not how you kill him in the actual game. CHEATER! And of course, it wouldn't be an Adam Sandler movie without the absolute hardest line fathomable from his character just before that finishing blow. I've been waiting to do this since 1982. I'd totally buy that shit if it was on a shirt. Hey Ludlow, <laughs> I totally didn't completely forget about you or anything. How have you been do it? 
I'm not even gonna ask how the hell all this happened. This movie's crazy coincidences just keep on coming, so I don't even know why I'm surprised. Uh, nobody ever told me this movie was based on a true story. Because after everything, the Arcaders are all recognized worldwide as heroes. But most importantly, Adam Sandler. My hero. Everyone gets their happy ending. Brenner and Van Patten get married, probably. Cooper is seen as an actual good president. Eddie makes up for his mistakes and gets to fuck Serena Williams. Maddie goes on to become a doctor who cures cancer. That stupid-ass military general guy I've never known the name of fucking dies and burns in hell. I made those last two up. And most importantly, Tyler is back home. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, one person doesn't get a happy ending. Ludlow. To confirm any suspicions, yes, that was Lady Lisa brought to life back there. But since the Arcaders won, the aliens took her back. I would feel bad, but this is also Ludlow we're talking about here, so... Wait. What in the living fuck is Qbert doing? No. No. No, 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 what the fuck? One walk a flock of flame credits theme that I actually put in my Spotify playlist later, and the movie is over. Can we rewatch the scene where Maddie gets abducted? <laughs> Guys, that was the movie, guys. That was a movie. <sighs> okay. So while I did complain a lot throughout this movie, I mean, I want to be comedic and all, which is way easier to do with a negative connotation to everything, which, don't get me wrong, was genuine. Why do I still love this movie? <laughs> I must have just been seeing things, right? <laughs> There's no way this movie could be bad, right? Right? No, 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 I was definitely just seeing things. That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Of course. All right, hey guys! Nathan, that movie fucking sucked. Yeah, I was waiting for that legendary sex scene. Man, I want a refund. What? I didn't pay you? I paid you in an hour 45 minutes of my pain and suffering. No, no, no! You guys just don't get it! This movie isn't a funny little comedy meant to be made fun of and nothing else. It's a tear-jerking tale of war, death, and most importantly, loss. Sam Burner takes all of these elements and flips them on their head to come out successfully in the end. He should be an inspiration to us all, and I know he is to me. He's my hero. Pixels, the greatest by the greatest. Bravo, Sandler! I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm gonna prove this movie's good. If Brenner, no. If Adam Sandler can do it, then I can too. And nobody's gonna stop me. What is this right here? What is that dumbass doing in there? Man, I'm always gonna be a fucking loser who loves pixels. I'm gonna go talk to that guy. <laughs> hey, man. Don't beat yourself up about it. Well, Pixels definitely does suck ass. That's what opinions are for. They're subjective. They're meant to differ between people. Granted, some less than others, but basically, just because we all have differing opinions doesn't mean we can't be friends. Am I right, guys? Mm, yeah, I guess you're right. I can't even tell if I like this movie ironically or not, but nevertheless, I got carried away. I'm sorry. Man, I can't believe I did all that. Uh, 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 uh. Holy shit, he is an angel. Adam Sandler, it's such a joy to meet you, man. I guess this means I can toss the plans to take a trip to your house at 440 Chestnut Street, Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Nathan, I've come down here to tell you today that- Wait, 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 let me guess. I'm right. Pixels really is the best movie of all time, and everyone else has just been coincidentally wrong. Mm. You would let me freaking talk. Damn. And no, that's not why I'm here. Listen, Pixels is the biggest mistake of my life. It is the worst movie I have ever made by a landslide. And you should feel bad for liking it even a little. Screw that differing opinions bullcrap your friend was just going on about. This is truly irredeemable. And you know what? For being such a dedicated fan of my movie that you would go to the lengths of terrorizing an entire arcade, a place I haven't even been able to show my face in since 2015, in my own name, why don't you live for the rest of your life? So, am I correct in assuming that I'm not getting an autograph today? So Yo, so what the hell is this shit? I thought I'd be shooting light cannons or cracking jokes with Ludlow or something stupid like that. Oh, shit! Be careful, guys! Nah, fuck this. I find a way out of here. It's gotta be somewhere.
Get me the hell out of this place!